With time, art, like all things, is subject to the passage of time. Colors fade, canvases wear, and the stories they tell can become obscured. Such was the fate of the death of Cardinal Beaufort until its recent restoration breathed new life into it, the rebirth of a demon. And well, this painting is one masterpiece that just doesn't speak. It resonates, echoing a story of spirituality, mortality, and a touch of the supernatural. At its center, a figure of religious authority on his deathbed, surrounded by the tangible weight of his final moments. But there's an unexpected guest in this holy scene, a demon lurking, waiting, its presence both unsettling and undeniably captivating. Now you might wonder, in a scene so deeply rooted in religious symbolism, what role does a demon play? It's a question that has intrigued art enthusiasts and historians alike. The demon's presence, while controversial, is no mere artistic whim. It's a deliberate choice, a narrative tool that adds layers of depth to the painting, making it not just a visual treat, but a topic of intense discussion. And well, behind this haunting canvas is Sir Joshua Reynolds, a star of the 18th century British art scene. Born in 1723 in Plimpton, Devon, Reynolds was destined for greatness from a young age. The son of a headmaster, he was initially set on a path to become a physician. But as fate would have it, the appeal of the canvas was too strong to resist. By the age of 27, Reynolds had already established himself in London, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Samuel Johnson and Edmund Burke. His studio in Leicester Fields became a hub for the intellectual elite, a testament to his rising stature, not just as an artist, but as a thinker and an influencer of his time. Reynolds wasn't just a painter, he was an innovator. He co-founded the Royal Academy of the Arts in 1768, serving as its first president. Under his leadership, the Academy became a beacon for aspiring artists, offering lectures, exhibitions, and a platform for artistic discourse. His annual discourses, a series of lectures on art theory and practice, are still considered foundational texts in the study of art. But what truly set Reynolds apart was his style. While many of his colleagues were confined to the rigidity of portrait painting, Reynolds brought a breath of fresh air. His portraits were alive, dynamic, capturing not just the likeness, but the very essence of his subjects. He had a knack for infusing his works with emotion, be it the playful innocence of a child or the dignified poise of a statesman. His use of color, light, and shadow was masterful, giving his paintings a depth and realism that was unparalleled. Yet for all his technical skills, it was Reynolds' ability to tell a story through his art that truly made him legendary. Each painting was a narrative, a window into the soul of its subject. And the death of Cardinal Beaufort is no exception. In this masterpiece, Reynolds' unique style and storytelling skills come true, offering viewers a glimpse into a moment that is both intimate and profound. At first glance, the death of Cardinal Beaufort is a scene steeped in seriousness. The canvas is dominated by the figure of Cardinal Beaufort, lying on his deathbed surrounded by clergy and attendants. The room is dimly lit, with soft, muted tones that evoke a sense of quiet respect. The details are detailed, from the intricate patterns on the bedspread to the somber expressions on the faces of those present. But as your eyes wander, they are drawn to the painting's elements. The use of light and shadow is masterful. Reynolds employs a technique known as chiaroscuro, where he contrasts light and dark to give depth and volume to his illustrations. This is especially evident in the folds of the Cardinal's robes and the play of light on his face, highlighting his paleness and the gravity of the moment. The color palette is restrained with earthy browns, deep reds, and muted golds. These colors not only set the mood, but also guide the viewer's eye across the canvas. The use of red in particular is symbolic. It's the color of the Cardinal's robes, representing his religious stature, but it's also the color of the demon lurking in the background, hinting at the painting's deeper themes. And then there's the demon. Its presence is jarring, a stark contrast to the rest of the scene. While the other figures are rendered in realistic detail, the demon is more abstract, 
its form twisted and ugly. Its eyes, glowing with wickedness, seem to bore into the viewer, making it impossible to look away. This figure, more than any other element, evokes an instinctive reaction. It's a reminder of the eternal battle between good and evil. Its presence in the death of Cardinal Beaufort is both unexpected and unsettling. While the rest of the scene is steeped in holiness and worship, this demonic figure introduces a layer of tension and doubt. The inclusion of the demon has been a topic of much speculation. Why would Reynolds, known for his meticulous attention to detail and narrative, introduce such a disturbing element? Some art historians believe it's a nod to the Cardinal's rumored struggles with sin and redemption. The demon, they argue, represents the weight of his sins, a visual manifestation of his eternal battle for salvation. Others see it as a commentary on the church itself. During Reynolds' time, the church was grappling with its own controversies from corruption to doctrinal debates. The demon in this interpretation symbolizes the challenges and criticisms faced by the institution. But beyond the speculations, what's undeniable is the stark contrast the demon presents. While the rest of the painting adheres to a religious theme with figures in prayer and reflection, the demon is a stark departure. Its twisted form, wicked gaze, and the sheer audacity of its presence amidst a holy scene make it all the more intriguing. And then comes the restoration. The restoration process was no small feat. Undertaken by a team of skilled conservators, it involved meticulous cleaning, removing layers of dirt and old varnish that accumulated over the centuries. As each layer was gently stripped away, the painting's original vibrancy began to shine through. But it wasn't just about rejuvenating colors. The restoration unveiled hidden details that had been obscured or faded over time. One of the most striking discoveries was the enhanced prominence of the demon. Previously subdued, the restoration revealed subtle nuances in its form previously hidden, emphasizing its significance in the story. The demon, it seemed, had been waiting in the shadows, and the restoration had thrust it into the spotlight. The restored painting was met with a mix of awe and debate. The public, seeing the artwork in its renewed glory, were captivated. The demon, with its enhanced details, became a focal point of discussions, with many marveling at Reynolds' skill in portraying such a contrasting figure amidst a religious scene. Critics, too, weighed in. While many praised the restoration for its fidelity to Reynolds' original vision, others delved deeper into the implications of the now prominent demon. Debates ensued about its symbolism, its role in the painting, and what Reynolds might have been trying to convey. So what's the story behind the painting? History is full of moments that define eras, shape nations, and capture the human spirit. The death of Cardinal Beaufort is one such moment, and its portrayal by Sir Joshua Reynolds offers a window into a time of turbulence, faith, and power. Cardinal Henry Beaufort was no ordinary clergyman. Born in the 1370s, he was a preeminent figure in 15th century England, both as Bishop of Winchester and a Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. But his influence extended beyond the pulpit. He was a key player in the political intrigues of his time, navigating the tumultuous waters of the Wars of the Roses and serving as a trusted advisor to King Henry V. His death in 1447 marked the end of an era. It wasn't just the passing of a religious leader. It was the culmination of a life that had been at the crossroads of faith and politics. Rumors and stories surrounded his final moments. Some said he died in a state of despair, haunted by his deeds and seeking absolution. Others whispered of visions of demons that tormented him on his deathbed, a reflection of the internal battles he faced. Reynolds' portrayal of this moment is more than just an illustration. It's an interpretation. The painting captures the gravity of the Cardinal's final moments, surrounded by clergy with the weight of his life's choices bearing down on him. The presence of the demon, whether real or imagined, serves as a poignant reminder of the eternal struggle between good and evil, redemption and damnation. In the end, through the painting, Reynolds invites us to reflect on the fragility of life, the choices we make, and the legacy we leave behind. But what do you think? Does the prominence of the demon change your insight of the painting? Or does it enhance the narrative, adding depth and dimension to the story? Comment down below and see you in the next video.